Hello, hello, hello. First, I want to thank you viewers and supporters that have been helping us. Uh, it's you and you and us. At this point, we have no other support coming in, but what you guys do, we're viewers supported, and I'm just so thankful that we're still going. And a lot of bumps in the road last year, but we're still here. And we know there's so much censorship. So today I want to be really careful. I wanted to give you all an update on uh, the globalization that's going on. And because I reported it about, what, three weeks ago, a month ago, we've definitely seen a little bit of shadow banning more. But I, I told you I'm going to give you an update, so I'm going to, and I'm trying to avoid certain words, OK? Uh, so the last week of May, they had their week, and let's just call it the Merchants of the Earth, okay? Because a lot of you guys know these alphabet names, and now if you even say them, you get in trouble. And I, I do want to stay on preaching the word as long as I can, so I want to... But part of what I feel like I've always been called to do since 2016 is be a watchman. And that journey has not been easy because... Uh, I came out of all these movements with no help, really. And along the way, we kind of have recommended things or people or books. And now we found out that that was maybe not such a good book or maybe that was not such a good preacher. So we've tried to not <laughs> mention any names or books anymore. There are a couple I still do, but um, there's so much out there that is so, you think it's good and then you find out as you research more that it isn't. So we're still taking down videos from the past, 2016, is it 2017 to now, Mark? Uh, because we, we find, I mentioned names, a lot of it's good, but then there's like that 5% of mentioning somebody and I don't want to steer people into the wrong path. So that's a continual challenge of finding truth and sticking to it. But if, I, if I've said something wrong, I'll admit it and I'll take that video down. So thank you for those that are helping us with that, and you know who you are. So anyway, the, the merchants of the earth, uh, of course we know what the goal is, the one world, and now we're, we're finding out, which I've told you about some of the ones, on what was it, as the world turns. I, I go into a lot, I think that's still up. But it talks about how climate is our new religion. And so much is going on with that. But this was an update from the end of May on their meeting. There was a huge United States presence at this global meeting, which was shocking as, as how many Democrats and Republicans both were there. Uh, talking about carbon footprints, disinformation. So what is disinformation? It's information that they consider wrong. And today on one of their own forums, they got, <laughs> they got uh, a banner that said they were misinformation from the very, did you guys see that? From the very uh, forum itself. So they don't even have their acts together, but everything was disinformation. They even got disinformed banners. Uh, they talked about surveillance, censorship for disagreeing, more control, shut down the voices of truth. Uh, a big Minnesota presence was there as well. Uh, some of it I don't want to say. Uh, they talked about pain, pain at the pump. There's going to be, this is my words, away from oil and natural gas, which I've tried to warn you about. There's going to be a painful transition. So as they go into their electric vehicles more and more, we're transitioning now where they will make it painful eventually here too. Well, it already is for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Of course, they talked about the green agenda. agenda. Um, their upcoming, their carbon, carbon footprint tracking, where you travel, how much you travel, what you eat. They're working on that. I, I kind of believe it's already here, but they, they only let you see certain things. The merchants of the earth, this is a worldwide situation that's going on and we know this has been going on through emergency powers and they're going to regroup for the next meeting all that to say the book of revelations 
has come alive, <laughs> hasn't it? Now, I'm going to give you a couple articles. Uh, and I just report, you decide, okay? Uh, the red bullseye for a logo store <laughs> is going on right now to uh, cause young people to reject the bodies that God gave them and have chest binders to strap down their breasts compression underwear for boys, or packing underwear with a bulge for girls. There are t-shirts with pronouns. Again, I just report what this article is saying, which I've checked it out. Um, now this battle is going to the shelves, and it's reaching children directly. Another one. I report, you decide, this is coming out of the Climate Depot. I'm just going to condense it real quick. It's called Stop Cow Burps to Save the Planet. <laughs> At first you thought it was a joke, but it's one of the sustainable goals that I've been talking to you about. And this is Prince Charles Back's face mask for cows <laughs> to tackle Seriously. climate change. <laughs> On May 24th, 2022, the British startup ZELP, Zero Emissions Livestock Project, has developed masks for cows. Uh, it's to filter methane gas. Oh, wow. ZELP is currently testing. It's on the wrong end. ZELP is currently. <laughs> Quiet here. <laughs> I've got a few cheerleaders. It sounds like I have a, but it's, I have a few cheerleaders. I always have a few cheerleaders with me. I try to. ZELP is currently testing various prototypes of the cattle masks. These are already able to filter around 30% of the methane emitted, but in the future they want it to be 60%. Prince Charles, if you guys don't know this, he's one of the architects of the reset. A lot of people worship them. They support face masks for cows to fight Climate. Stop. Oh, control? I'm sorry, did I say that? Um, for net zero emissions globally, as well as the introduction of carbon pricing, the 100 gram rubber masks with solar powered fans are designed direct to direct the animals exhaling, exhalations, they call it, into a small chamber. Then they use chemical processes to convert methane into carbon dioxide. But first, the farmers have to be convinced that these masks actually work. The poor farmers nowadays, they're going through so much. Uh, the obstacle for the farmers is the cost is $45 per cow a year. It's funny because The Guardian reported in 2019 in Davos, 1,500 jets flew to and from that town. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That their jets don't seem to count. All right, enough with that. We're going to have a short one here. Second Chronicles. I had a whole message on pride because it is the month, you know. So. This is my first one. First, why do we need to know about pride? Because God resists the proud. It was the first sin of Lucifer. Pride was found in him. It wasn't formed in him. It was found in him because he wanted to exalt himself against God. And he's still trying to do it. And unfortunately, he's doing it in the earth. He is the God of this world. And Second Chronicles... We have to see what happens. This is what happened to King Uzziah, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 3. When he was 16 years old, Uzziah began to reign. In verse 4, it says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. In verse 5, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who was a, a man following God. 
And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. In verse 7, God helped him against the Philistines. Verse 8, Uzziah and his name spread abroad, even to entering into Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. He became very uh, successful in agriculture, in military, oper everything. He just grew. But remember, he started seeking the Lord. So what happened? Verse 10, he also built towers in the desert and digged many wells, for he had much cattle. Verse 11, he had a host of fighting men, just to see how big he got. And verse uh, 15b, and his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped, and listen to the next few words, till he was strong. But when he was strong, something happened to him. And the Bible warns us about what happened to him and what happened to Lucifer, what happened to the angels that fell with Lucifer. And one of the things God hates, one of the seven most things, is a spirit of pride, right? But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his own destruction. Pride always ends in destruction. Pride always ends in a fall. Pride always ends up in broken relationships, strife. Wherever you see pride, you see division, you see discord. Where you see humility, you see true love. When you see a humble person, the Bible says humility, we're supposed to humble ourselves. That actually in the Greek means to have the mind of a servant. We're here to serve and to help and to submit one to another. The spirit of pride does not submit to anyone. The spirit of pride is arrogant and always wants its way. It's unteachable. A proud person thinks they can't learn anything from someone. They know what, hey, have you ever met someone that knows it all? And they always have to be right. That's the spirit of pride. His heart was lifted up to his destruction for he transgressed against the Lord his God. Now listen to what he does next. He got so puffed up. He did, it wasn't just enough for him to be a king. Now he wanted to step into an office that God only gave to his priests. So now he steps over into wanting to burn incense in the temple. In other words, he's starting to make himself something he's not supposed to be. He wanted to cross every boundary because now he's so great. So he transgressed against the Lord his God and he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense, which he was not supposed to be doing. And as Azira, the priest, went in after him. And, and with him, four score priests, or 80 priests of the Lord, that were valiant men's, valiant men's. So they went to stop him. This was a total sin against God for him to go and do this. This was not what he was supposed to do. So all the other priests tried to stop him. And I'm sure they had to gather together because they had to come against him. And they withstood him. And they tell him that he sinned. Now, verse 19, this is the reaction of his pride, and this is the reaction of all of us when we get into pride. He didn't say, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I guess I stepped over a boundary. I shouldn't have done this. What does he do? He was angry, it says in verse 19. He was wroth. He was wroth with the priests. And then something happened. They warned him. Now, in the Old Testament, judgment came fast. So before Jesus died and rose again for our sins, his leprosy even rose on his forehead. He was leprous in his forehead in verse 20, and they thrust him out from thence. The Lord had smitten him, and Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death. He was cut off from the house of the Lord. Pride is a killer. And I don't think we've taught enough about pride. Uh, now we have celebrity preachers that love idolatry. We haven't taught correctly on what humility is and how not to put someone up on a pedestal. That's God's place, right? So pride is a killer. And God can bless you, but if you take those blessings and you say you did it, you're not giving glory to where the glory deserves. We are to give the, the honor and the glory to the Lord, right? Now, the, the Bible says the fear of the Lord. 
We need to walk in the fear of the Lord. We don't even know what this means, most of us. To fear the Lord is to live in reverence that you know he's watching you. And you know that he's seeing everything we see and do and behave and act. That's when you're conscious of him. People that don't have the fear of the Lord, they don't care what they do, what they say, how they act, because they don't fear him. They don't trust him. They don't believe in him. So the fear of the Lord is, what is it? It's to hate evil. We're to hate evil, not to embrace it because it's popular in the culture. We're to hate evil and we're to hate pride. Not only hate pride in someone else, but we all have pride. We have to deal with it. It comes in very mysteriously. Uh, Arrogancy. The Lord hates arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. What's coming out of your mouth? If you fear the Lord, you're going to start repenting for what comes. Don't say it's your French because you, you don't speak French. But it's all of us have to watch out as we get angrier in these end times of what is happening to the world. Remember to walk in the fear of the Lord. You don't use his name in vain and you know he's watching us. So that's a healthy fear of the Lord. He said the forward, say that five times, mouth do I hate. What is that? That's Perverse, twisted speech. In Psalms 10.4, the proud will not seek after God. Pride dislikes the role of a learner and it's unteachable. No longer needs advice. We have to all, even if we get old, a lot of older people get full of pride. They don't want to believe anything that the younger people are telling them that's happening in the world because of their spirit of pride. And a lot of them grew up in the Depression, and it was hard times, and they have been through rough times. These younger generations, we don't know what hard times have been compared to what's coming. So we all have to stay teachable. We all have to stay submitted to one another. Sometimes you got to walk away from the angry man, the Bible says, the proud and arrogant. So pride dislikes the role of a learner because they're unteachable. They don't, they don't think they need advice. Just ask them. Now, and on the other side, don't throw your pearls before a swine. There's things we know people don't want to hear, and you can tell that they don't want to hear it. Don't throw the things that God's shown you in, in the face of people that don't want to hear it. Use wisdom. Uh, pride doesn't like to submit to God or anyone else. Having the mind of a servant is not putting yourself down. It doesn't mean you you debase yourself and say, I can't do something when you can. It's not having a lack of confidence. None of those, that's false humility. God wants us to have true humility. So we see ourselves in the Lord. He gives us gifts. Use those gifts for his glory. Don't say you can't do something when you can. That's false humility. Just say, I can do that. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength and the power to do that. Now in Psalms 2, the kings of the earth, they come against the Lord and his anointed, right? We're seeing that. We're we're about to see more of it. They have no fear of God. They don't care. They, They don't fear consequences of sin. They don't think there will be consequences. Right now they're ruling the earth and their, their plans are being exposed publicly now because they're so far, I hate to say it, but they're pretty advanced in what they're doing. So they're narcissistic lovers of themselves. And lastly, pride. This is a heavy subject, so you can only take so much. It's like, eat your spinach, eat your spinach. Come on, don't spit it up. God resists the proud. In Obadiah 3.3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So when we get into pride, we're deceived. We're deceived on who we are, who we think we are. And then lastly, in 1 Timothy, it says, give heed, they're giving heed in chapter 4, to seducing spirits, people that are deceived, that are in pride, and doctrines of devils. In verse 3, what are some of these doctrines of devils? Forbidding to marry? We're going to see this more and more because the Bible says so, and abstaining from meats. So 
is it Italy, that they're now in children's lunchrooms, giving them the opportunity to have bugs in their lunches if they want that. It's a choice. It's not forced yet, but they're introducing a lot of things to take away what God created. To, it's basically everything is going fake, isn't it? But our hope is we can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We're not strong in ourselves. We're strong in the power of his might. And that's boldness. We can be courageous, be strong and of good courage. Even in these end times, you're the light of your family. You're the light maybe of your neighborhood. And people are watching. Even though you don't know what they're watching you, they're watching to see how you respond and how you react. And we're supposed to have the hope, the hope. And we, we know the future. Whatever happens on this earth, we're crossing over to a, what, no more taxes there. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're going to place no more bills there. Uh, as we see things go on and on, we know that we're just passing through. Father, we thank you that heaven is our home. We believe in it. We believe in a heaven. We believe in a hell. A lot of preachers are saying there is no hell. Uh, we go with what the Bible says and what your word says, not new translations that are adding and changing, adding on, taking away. We thank you for your word. Your word is truth. And we just pray for all the viewers that they be encouraged, they be strengthened in the Lord today, that today is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice in it. We're going to be glad. We're going to enjoy our day. And everyone said? Amen. 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 If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her, and be sure to check out her YouTube playlists for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the Messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main web page at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.